So hey, how's it going everybody? I have another video here to share with you guys on how to do a clean install and formatting of Windows 8. Um, the particular version that I'm doing this video on is Windows 8.1 Pro 64-bit. And this will work on all versions of Windows 8, um, all full versions of that operating system, 32-bit and 64-bit. So uh, one reason you'd wanna do this uh, formatting is if you're having issues with your system, say you have a bunch of spyware on there popping up on you, your system's running slow, you have viruses on there, whatever the case may be, you want to just start clean from the beginning and wipe the computer out entirely and format it. Um, one thing you'll need to do before you do this is back up all your music data and pictures. Any files you have on there you want to save because this will destroy that stuff and you will not get it back. So. If your computer is so bad that you can't actually boot it up or get in there to do anything, then you're going to have to take it somewhere and have somebody help you with that. Um, that's kind of something different. You'd have to pull your hard drive out of that computer, connect that hard drive to another computer, and then go in and get your files and data off before you could actually reinstall that hard drive back into that computer and format from the beginning. So this is actually from... You know, the beginning, like my system's booted up right now, and I'm showing you how to just go through the process of reinstalling Windows 8. So I'll show you real quick. I do have a CD, or actually that is a DVD, Windows 8.1 Pro, full version, 64-bit. And I also have a valid product key that I'm going to enter during, in during when I'm going through the installation process that it will prompt me to enter to do this the valid way and the correct way so I can activate that key. And that key is a series of like uh, numbers and letters. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. Just remember to back up all your stuff guys before attempting to do this. Now I'm doing this on a Dell, a desktop computer, a Dell Optiplex 760. Nothing, you know, fancy, not a gaming system, just a standard desktop. So what you wanna do, is if you have those two things, go ahead and put your DVD into the drive and you want to uh, restart your computer. Now, mine is a Dell and I'm gonna show you guys what you have to do as soon as it restarts. You wanna hit F12 right at the beginning. If you look at the top right of my screen, once this starts, you'll see it say boot options, okay? This is gonna be important because you need to boot from this Windows DVD in order to go through this process. So let's give it a second to restart and then it should come up to the screen here and give me the option to boot from DVD. Top right of my screen, it'll say F12 boot options. So I hit F12. And that's going to get me in here to the boot device menu, okay? Now, what I want to do is actually select the first one. I would hit enter, and that's going to boot the Windows DVD, installation DVD for me. Now, let's say some of you guys can't get into that screen and your computer just keeps, you know, you put the disc in, the DVD in, and your computer keeps, you restarted it, but it keeps booting back to the desktop. Um, that's not what you want. So I'm going to show you how to go into the system BIOS and set your computer to boot from DVD automatically. Okay, you you guys may have to, you know, try this a couple times. Some systems are F2, F10, or F12. Um, the Dell that I'm using, the command is F2 to get into the BIOS. Sometimes you can hit escape. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart. And I'm going to start pressing F2 repeatedly because I know for a Dell system, that's going to get me into something that's called the system BIOS, which is what you're looking at now. Okay. Now in this BIOS is where you want to set your boot sequence um, for what over here on the right is uh, it says onboard CD ROM drive. That is actually listed first for me. So my computer is already set to automatically boot to look for a you know a something that's bootable in that drive okay and if i select that and choose arrow down 
then it would try and boot from my hard drive, which I don't want it to do. So you want to make sure that your CD-ROM is first, whatever drive you're using, um, as far as your CD-ROM drives, if you have two, you want to make sure if it's E or whatever whatever it is, you want to make sure you have the exact, the exact one in the first position so your computer can boot automatically from the Windows CD. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it there where it was. I'm going to click. If you do make changes in here, make sure you hit um, apply or save and then exit out of the BIOS. So if I just let this computer reboot now, it's automatically going to come up and that should be in the left top. It'll say press any key to boot from CD. Press any key to boot from DVD or CD or CD or DVD. So that right there is when you want to press enter. Now what's happening is it's actually booting from the Windows DVD. And this is going to get us into where we can do a couple of things and go right through the process of installing Windows 8. And I will try not to edit a lot of this out so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. And some of you may have bought a system that from the store. Um, like I said, you want to make sure before you do this stuff um, that you check that you have a product key, check to see what DVD or CD you have in, in order to restore. You know, um, you may even have a partition built in on your computer that you can boot from. Like you would find that in under your C drive and it would say like system recovery or something like that. Usually you can restart your computer and press like F11 when it's starting up in the very beginning when you restart and that could boot that partition, which kind of does the same thing I'm doing now. I'm doing this basically because I'm upgrading to Windows 8 and I put my Windows 7 computer aside. So I wanted to play around with Windows 8 some. Okay, so here's the setup. So in here, you just want to click next and install now. Now, so far it hasn't wiped out anything on the computer. Again, remember that you wanna make sure before you do any of this kind of stuff that you have, I'll, I'll show you exactly when it does, but, and here is when we enter in the product key. You need a valid product key at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that in. Okay, so I entered in my product key and this is the screen that popped up next for me. And I want to go ahead and accept those terms and conditions. Now, here's where we are going to select the custom install Windows only. This is for advanced users. Um, the way I'm doing it, I'm going to show you how to do it this way. And I am not doing an up upgrade. I mean, doing a complete wipeout, destructive format, full install. So I'm going to click custom. Now in here is where what happens in here is each of these partitions that are listed, even unallocated space, you want to go through and select the first one. Um, if you can't click delete, then skip past it and go to the next one. Once you get to that one, click delete. Now what I'm doing now, uh, select the next one, delete. This is what's actually destroying the data. Right now, all the data has been de deleted from the computer, okay? And it leaves you with just one drive O, which is your hard drive, with the unallocated space here. Now, what you got to do here, though, is select New, and now Apply, okay? And then click OK, and this is going to create a partition, okay? And the first partition here is System Reserved Space, okay? We're not going to mess with that. That's only 350 meg. Um, still, on all this is on the same hard drive. Drive O partition 2, where it says your larger amount. Here's 111 gig. Okay, this is the main part of your drive. That's the one that we want to format. So now we select format, and we're going to format the drive. So it's going to format. Okay, now we're all set. Now we want to make sure we leave where it says type over here. It says primary, leave this one highlighted, and then you'll click next. So that's actually installing. 
Windows 8 onto the hard drive. Now, we've gotten rid of everything now. If there was viruses on there, if there was spyware, if the system was running slow because the hard drive was just gummed up or whatever, um, this is going to give it a complete fresh start. All that stuff's gone. I do help people with computers, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And a lot of them just don't care for the Windows 8. Um, I think because of the it kind of being where it's... Now, at this point, do not press, press the boot from CD, DVD, um, pop up there. You only do that one time in the very beginning. When it comes back up on the screen like that, you just let it go when you see it the second time around. You don't want to press it again because it's just going to automatically go through at this point and start installing. Um, there's probably several times you're going to see your screen flash, which is completely normal, even when it gets booted to the desktop. And again, if you see that pop up, do not press that. It's just going through a series of reboots to get re you know get itself installed. But like I said, once you get to the desktop here, um, it's going to you know be doing things in the background like downloading updates, and it may the screen may flicker. So. That's fine. Okay, so here we are at the personalized screen. Actually, I'm going to select, let's see, what do I want? Eh. That one looks a little hard on the, let's just go with the dark blue there for now. I'm going to name my computer. So here you could put living room or bedroom. I'm going to click next. It says here settings, express settings. You can, you know, you can use express settings or customize. You can always change this stuff later. Um, if I click customize, I'll go through it real quick. Yes, for home. And then it just gives you the options, you know, to turn things on and off, like updating apps. It's always good to keep things up to date and keep things protected. Um, so I try to leave most of this stuff turn, turned on. Check online for solutions, that's fine. Um, so help improve Microsoft products and services. It says here, send some data to Microsoft when location aware apps are used. So you wanna read through that. Mine's, these are turned off by default. So I'm not really worried about this stuff. Just make sure you go through it all. Share info with Microsoft. It's up to you guys if you have an account and you wanna share services or you know whatever with Microsoft. I It doesn't really matter to me. Okay, it says sign in to your Microsoft account. Now, I don't have a Microsoft account. So what, what you want to click is where it says create a new account. This is how you get past the screen if you do not have a Microsoft account. I probably should have a Microsoft account because I'm showing you this video, but it's not necessarily focused on having a Microsoft account. So once you get to where it says create a Microsoft account down here at the bottom, it says sign in without a Microsoft account. Go ahead and select that. Now username, I'm going to name it Jamie because um, the on your desktop, now this is what your folder and your user account is going to be named, okay? And then I'm gonna finish and it's gonna finalize your settings. Hi, we're setting things up for you. Awesome. You can get new apps from the store. Okay, let's start. See, I think this is the screen that throws everybody off. Um, down here it says desktop. You can click that and it takes you right to your desktop. Like the old style, like a Windows 7. So down here, if you click that again, it's like these apps. Eventually, what Microsoft's trying to do is you're going to be swiping this stuff. So if you hold the cursor over here, you can push that stuff over or back, whatever. 
I'm not going to go into great detail on how to use Windows 8. Um, I know it can be a bit confusing and some people just say the heck with it and take their computer back, but um, they're going to force it on us eventually and everyone will be using it and doing all this. So down here, just select desktop. And if you go down here in the corner and you right click, you can get a lot of your options right there. And But what I want to do is right click out here in the desktop and go to personalize. And then up here on the left, I can click change desk, desktop icons and I want to check mark all those icons just so it's simple for now for them to show up. And then down here in the corner here, click apply and OK. So see, they'll pop up on the screen here. Now, this used to say my computer. Now it says this PC. So I'm going to right click on that and go to properties. And there you can see down here near the bottom, it says Windows activation. Windows is activated. That's a very important thing. You want to make sure that your system shows that. And then another thing you want to check is your device manager, which would be the link up here under control panel home. It says device manager. Um, and here's where all this stuff starting up here at the top on this device manager is okay and working. Once you get down here and you see these two things, PCI serial port, they have like a yellow triangular explanation point there. There's no drivers currently for those things, okay? So you, you have to install drivers. And what happens is this may be your audio or your video. Like right now, the, there's no video drivers installed on here. Um, this installation may, like it may be looking for updates now, so the screen may flicker and it may automatically install. Um, that's what I'll show you next. But this is really important. You might see your printer showing up in here, like with the yellow explanation. It means that stuff's not going to work. So you have to go to, say you have um, an HP printer, you have to go to HP's website and look for drivers uh, specifically for your model of printer, and you have to choose Windows 8 as your operating system. Okay, so um, this gets into kind of a, another ball game here with the device managers. So sometimes you can do this wipe out and install and, and everything in this list will look nice and clean like that. And other times you'll have some issues here. So like I said, there's a couple of ways that can be handled, but that's really important for your sound to work, for your video to work correctly, and for your other peripherals like your other additional external things you have connected to the computer. So what we'll do now is we will check uh, the browser. So I'm going to go down here to Internet Explorer. And at the top of Internet Explorer, if you right click and select and left click menu bar, that puts up this nice little menu bar here that most of us are used to seeing. And you can click where it says tools and come down to where it says Windows Update. And that would be the next step um, in the process of finishing this installation that I would do is start doing my Windows updates immediately. As long as you have a good, clean, activated system, you're all good to go to start doing updates. And what this is gonna do is help, um, again, if I go over here and go back into the device manager, the Windows update process will help look for drivers and help correct all these issues in here. So you want to do all your all your updates first, and then I would say you can come back into the device manager later and look for the drivers here. Um, whatever drivers that Windows updates doesn't find for the device manager in there, you can simply go to like I have a. I'm going to go to Google here. I have a Dell computer, desktop computer. So I'm going to go to Dell support and come down here where it says support.dell.com. And I know that's the link I need. And I'm going to go ahead and, and select that. And then what I would do is enter the service tag or the express service code off my Dell computer in here. Okay, which is basically, I'll show you B76KYK1. And then I'm gonna go ahead and submit. Okay, so this works the same for like HP. You can go to H, just go to Google, type in HP support. Um, you can find printer drivers this way. So see, it comes up and finds my, my, my computer and everything like that. So then I've just come down here 
look for somewhere it depends somewhere different your guys is whatever manufacturer you go to whatever you know their website you'll come to this down here it says drivers and downloads so you want to select that okay and of course they had to pop up uh, no thanks a pop up but once you get into the your drivers and downloads full um, web page here then it'll say these drivers match your selections. So see all these drivers here you can install onto your computer to help with the issues in here under the device manager. So like under display adapters, this is just using a basic display adapter right now. That's why you see the screen is scrunched and the icons are real big. Okay, so what you would do is say you needed audio files for your particular computer. Now, over here, you'd first, you'd want to make sure you pick your operating system. And there's no support for Windows 8 on my computer, but I know the drivers um, that worked with Windows 7 work just fine with my computer for Windows 8. But that's a little more advanced, and there's a few things I had to do to make this work on mine. But, but that's kind of how you, how you guys would do it on yours. So you'd go in there, change, change this operating system to whatever applies to you, and then download the drivers. And you got to be careful downloading these drivers sometimes. So if you guys have, say, a camera, a web camera for your computer, and it's, say, the brand is Logitech, you can go to Logitech.com and look for the Windows 8 drivers for your specific camera and download those onto your, your computer. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. I really don't have much more to go over. I just wanted to show you guys um, how to do a clean install of Windows 8 on your computer, mine being 8.1 Pro, 64-bit. And I don't think Windows 8's all that bad. I haven't had no issues with it. Um, so, And what you're seeing right now is what I was talking about earlier. What it did right there was just install the driver. So you can see how the, the whole system here looks different now. So it just said there was a problem checking for updates. It found an error. Sometimes it does that. Um, not a big deal. Just go back in there, do your updates again, and uh, you should be fine. Every now and then, Microsoft Windows updates will have, the, maybe there'll be an error message or something. Okay, so right there, it's installing more uh, drivers on its own. So if I go in here to the settings again, and go to device manager, you can see some of that's automatically gone. There's only one item left there. And if I go up here under display adapters, now it says AMD Radeon HD 6570. So it started already correcting issues. So I would say that's the biggest thing reinstalling this stuff is going into the device manager in here and knowing how to install the drivers for everything in your computer to make your audio work and everything after you wipe your computer out. So the screen should probably look a little smaller to you guys now, especially if I go into the apps here. But other than that, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Um, like I said, I don't think, as long as you know how to go in here and use this stuff, I think that um, it's not all that bad of an operating system. I haven't spent a lot of time with it, but just to quickly get you going, maybe that'll help you guys out so you can get in there. Everyone is used to this desktop, but I'm afraid this is what's coming. Maybe uh, Windows 10 will be like this. It'll come out next year, Windows 10. So, all right, guys, that's pretty much all I have for you. Um, thanks a lot for watching. I hope this helps some of you out that you can stay at home and just fix your computer on your own. So. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment, and I hope you have a great one.